Dozens of people stuck without water right before Thanksgiving. What they're threatening to do if landlords don't step up within the next 24 hours. Plus, everyone who traveled somewhere for Thanksgiving now has to make the return trip home. What health experts are warning them to do and when they should go get tested for COVID-19. And it's Small Business Saturday, how this unofficial holiday is providing a little more cheer for shops that have sorely needed some business during this pandemic. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. I feel like if they would have done it right the first time, we wouldn't be having this issue the second time. A Danville trailer park shut off its water on Thanksgiving. The entire park is now still without water. Good evening, I'm Jen Lask. This isn't the first time town and country trailer park homes have had their water shut off for days on end. Less than three weeks ago, tenants had their water shut off to fix a faulty pipe. WCIA 3's Jared Farmer followed up with people to see what's going on there. So Jared, tell us what's changed. Well, Jen, last time I spoke with the homeowners living there, they said they wanted some basic changes. This includes better communication with the landlords. This included the use of licensed plumbers and no more multiple day stints without water. But the past couple of weeks so far, nothing has changed. Tenants say it's already frustrating enough that abrupt water shutoffs are even happening during the pandemic, but it was made even worse by the fact that the latest one ruined their Thanksgiving. Management for town and country trailer park homes is still working on fixing a leak from a few weeks ago that required them to shut the water off. Tenants say they were told the day before Thanksgiving that their water would be shut off again at 3 in the afternoon. It's refrigerated. I don't like it been without water. They had to go uh, has to get water from somebody else's house. And it's all called for. Management told people living in the homes that they were not able to find a licensed plumber to work on the property. They continued using their own handymen until one of the people living in the park called one of the plumbers that they knew to finally get a licensed professional on the property. Another tenant says it's ridiculous they're still dealing with the same problem after nearly three weeks. Here we are in the same situation during a pandemic again. You know, I mean, I just don't get it. Management gave out two single gallons of water to everyone in the park after shutting the water off. They say they're working to get the power back on as soon as possible. In Danville, I'm Jared Farmer, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Tenants told me that if their water is not back on by tomorrow, then on Monday they would look into hiring a lawyer to represent the park. Live in the newsroom, Jared Farmer, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, thank you, Jared. We'll be looking forward to your updates on that. The Illinois Department of Public Health announced 7,873 new confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19 today. That includes 108 additional deaths. The preliminary seven-day statewide positivity rate for cases is now 10.1%. As of last night, 5,775 people were in the hospital with COVID-19. Of those, 1,211 patients were in the ICU, 686 were on ventilators. Millions stuck to their Thanksgiving travel plans this year, despite warnings from officials. Now, they're going to have to make those return journeys home. And you've seen these videos of crowds at O'Hare Airport, and it's images like these that have health officials worried. In fact, there are some things to keep in mind if you did decide to have a traditional Thanksgiving. WCIA 3's Gabrielle Cook has more. Thanksgiving was just a few days ago, but if you gathered with family and friends, you still need to wait for COVID testing. Our testing sites are open on Friday, but of course remember that you have to wait at least a minimum of seven days after you think you may have been exposed to get tested. Health officials are worried that many will rush to testing sites, but if you don't wait long enough, your COVID results could be inaccurate. Meanwhile, others didn't even take the risk and stayed home. While many families were sad they couldn't spend the holiday season together this year, some say it's worth it so that they can have a normal one next year. We just figure this is a, an investment in few, many more future holidays to come, and we just didn't want to have anyone take any risks with their own health. And the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District says if you did gather, sitting down for a meal wasn't the only danger. On their way at the airports or, you know, stopping at gas stations, stopping for a quick bite. There are many opportunities for getting infected before and during your 
trip as well. And with more holidays around the corner, they hope you remember there are safe ways of gathering. I know this is a very tough time, uh, especially for families and friends who are not able to do it the traditional way. But there are, you know, we have received hundreds of emails, Facebook messages of people doing alternate ways of, you know, spreading the joy, meeting each other virtually, meeting each other's outside in their backyards, wearing their mask. In Champaign, I'm Gabrielle Cook, WCIA 3, your local news leader. For a list of COVID-19 testing sites, you can go to our website, WCIA.com. The pandemic has forced restaurants and bars to make some tough decisions while trying to stay open, especially with the stricter rules in place for Tier 3. Rossville Family Restaurant has chosen to remain open instead of following those guidelines, and now owners say they're continuing to operate at 25% capacity and require masks and social distancing for customers inside. Restaurants could get their food or liquor licenses suspended for staying open since dining is a high-risk activity, but Rossville Family Restaurant says it could close for good without staying open. That this also comes as the Vermilion County Health Department is warning people to expect days of 100 or more new cases each more often in December. Small business owners in Springfield were counting on a big day on Small Business Saturday to help recover some of the losses from the pandemic. What they got even exceeded their own expectations. WCIA 3's Cole Hanke spoke with small business owners today. Corrine Campbell, owner of Corrine's Closet in downtown Springfield, didn't know what to expect this small business Saturday. What she got was an early Christmas surprise. Order. I was thinking, okay, it's going to be an okay day. I wasn't expecting this multitude of customers. Small Business Saturday marks the beginning of the holiday shopping season for many of these small businesses, and they're hoping that the strong turnout today is just a sign of things to come for the rest of the year. Uh, that if I can get through the pandemic and then come out of it in a normal year or whatever normal will end up being, then that gives me a lot of hope for, for years to come. Patrick Russell opened his business last year, right before Small Business Saturday. He said this year was on pace to match last year's sales numbers. People are making a conscious effort to come down and shop local. Um, especially more this year, uh, because it, it's true when they say, you know, you're directly supporting a family uh, when you shop local. Small business owners have gone months without that rush that comes with having a bustling showroom. It left owners like Campbell scared for the future, but she felt that feeling again Saturday and credited it to the Springfield community for showing up. You know what? It's amazing. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that, as I said before, tourism is like dried up, everything, there's no visitors. But now to see Springfield step it up and coming and spending time downtown Springfield, I'm excited. I can feel like chills. <laughs> Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hankey, WCIA3, your local news leader. Downtown Springfield Incorporated is also sponsoring holiday walks there. Every Wednesday and Saturday leading up to Christmas, a different business will have a special deal for shoppers. Urbana stores owners say seeing people in their stores has also been meaningful today. As businesses fight to bounce back from the impact of the pandemic, customer support is crucial. Like in Springfield, business has been up and down, but employees are hoping customers will continue to buy. People continue to support us, keep us going through this situation, that we'll come back bigger, better, and stronger than ever. If you're still not comfortable going to stores in person, business owners are reminding customers you can support them online. Health officials are reminding people to be cautious if they're shopping this weekend. To prevent the spread of COVID-19, experts say you should follow capacity limits in stores, social distance from those other shoppers, and wear masks. If possible, you can shop online, as we just mentioned. And the deputy administrator and epidemiologist for the Champaign-Urbana Health District says some hospitals are overwhelmed with cases. So be careful when going outside and shopping at stores. Christie Clinic celebrated its 20th annual Parade of Lights this evening. This year, they switched to a virtual format because of the pandemic, but found a way to make the most out of the online event. This year's theme is Home for the Holidays. Local businesses were asked to create mini floats out of shoe boxes to be put on display in the mini parade. The Champaign Center Partnership says this year was a great opportunity for smaller businesses that actually usually miss out on the parade.
I think is really spectacular because it just draws attention again to the small businesses that we have in our community. And we have a lot of really unique local businesses that you can't find anywhere else except for in Champaign. You can vote on which of your floats is your favorite. Ballots will close on December 4th and winners will be announced the next day. Santa Claus took a break from his busy schedule to pass out some goodie bags to families at the Champaign Public Library. The Champaign Center Partnership held the giveaway to kick off the Parade of Lights. It was a drive through event where you could stay in your car and talk to Santa, or you could take socially distanced photos with him. The goodie bags were filled with holiday treats, and if you missed him today, Santa will be coming to town again next weekend. Meanwhile, it really was a busy day for Santa. He also needed to find a new place to visit in Decatur this year because of COVID. So we settled down in the Decatur Transfer House. This holiday season, Santa's going to be spending some of his weekends inside that temporary workshop in downtown Decatur, and kids can come and take pictures with him and tell him what they want for Christmas from a safe distance. All of this so he can make sure kids stay healthy this holiday season. To be safe and to, uh, this will be over with soon, and uh, to mind their parents and be good. He'll be in the transfer house on weekends. Kids can also bring letters that will be sent off to the North Pole from his workshop. And Jacob, what kind of weather is Santa going to be dealing with when he visits us tomorrow again? Uh, tomorrow he'll be uh, seeing some increasing clouds and maybe a few snow flurries out there. He probably would have liked the sunshine today because I imagine the North Pole has snow all the time. Uh, but here locally, we'll enjoy that 48, maybe getting there tomorrow. But you're going to notice some changes in the next 48 to 72 hours. We'll talk about what it means for you coming up after this.